Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I'm updating my top five best CPUs list. The last time I made a video in this series was six months ago, and well, I try to update this series at least once every six months, so I suppose we're right on time. It worked out well actually, as I was waiting for the ninth gen core series from Intel to land before making the update, and then I guessed the Skylake X refresh that we pretty much knew what to expect with that one. So we now have a few new ninth gen CPUs from Intel, a few new Threadripper CPUs from AMD, and even a budget Athlon CPU as well. With so many options to choose from, picking a CPU can be a little hard, so hopefully this video will help. The five categories are best budget CPU, best value all-rounder desktop CPU, a best value productivity CPU, a best performance gaming CPU, I can't really do four fingers that well, and then the best extreme desktop CPU. So let's get into the picks. First up we have the best budget CPU and nothing has really changed here. I'm still sticking with my May pick, the Ryzen 3 2200G. Uh, before that, back in June of 2017, I was recommending the amazingly good value, at least at the time, uh, the Intel Pentium G4560. But of course, times have changed uh, in a rather big way. AMD recently released a $60 dual core of their own, uh, the Athlon 200GE, but it's a bit of a lackluster part in my opinion. It does beat out Intel's current Pentium lineup, but the fact that it's a locked processor at a not a particularly impressive clock speed, uh, yeah, the performance isn't great. I've recently found that spending the extra $40 to secure the 2200G is a much wiser investment as you get significantly more performance for that small increase in price. Uh, the dual core SMT enabled Athlon CPU it has very little headroom and it's virtually useless with a modern mid-range GPU. And therefore, you will get considerably more mileage with the Ryzen 3 model. Of course, the real competition for the 2200G comes from the Core i3-8100, which right now costs about $30 more, and it gets smoked without a discrete graphics card. And then if you want to use something like a GTX 1060 or an RX 580, they both seem like appropriate graphics cards for such a CPU. Well, they both deliver a similar gaming experience. Then for productivity workloads and general usage, uh, they're pretty evenly matched, though once overclocked, the 2200G generally comes out on top. So for me, the fact that the Ryzen 3 2200G is an unlocked part and therefore can be overclocked on an affordable motherboard, uh, can take advantage of higher clocked memory, packs a powerful integrated GPU and is slightly cheaper than the Core i3 8100, that makes it my number one budget CPU pick. Well, at the risk of being a bit boring, for this one I will be sticking with my six month old pick once again, uh, this time for the best value all around a desktop CPU. Last update, I picked the Ryzen 5 2600 or 2600X over the Core i5 8400. And before that, I went with the Ryzen 5 1600, and that was in last year's update. So if you've got around $200 to spend on a new CPU and you want something that can handle uh, any and all tasks you throw at it with maximum efficiency, then the Ryzen 5 2600 really is a must. Back in May, I noted that the Core i5 uh, was still an attractive alternative, and I said that it was a little cheaper, as it was at the time, and it arguably provided a better gaming experience, or at least better gaming performance. I suppose with certain graphics cards, the experience would be much the same. Anyway, it's crazy to look back on that because today the Ryzen 5 2600 costs just $160 US, while the Core i5 8400 is retailing for at least $220 US, making the Intel CPU almost 40% more costly. So again, pretty crazy that it's almost 40% more expensive given that it was actually cheaper last time I did my top five best gaming CPUs or top five best desktop CPU video. So yeah, that choice is very obviously now the Ryzen 5. Therefore, right now I'm recommending the Ryzen 5 2600 and I'm doing that actually over the 2600X. You could still go with the 2600X, but I think right now the ultimate value best all rounder is the 2600 as it costs just $160 US, opposed to $220 uh, that you'll pay for the X model. And with that massive saving, I recommend spending a bit more money on your motherboard. You could upgrade the cooling and go for overclocking. That's also uh, a valid option there. But by getting a better motherboard, you will set yourself up for the more uh, serious seven nanometer AMD CPUs next year. So in short, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, can hold a candle to the value of the Ryzen 5 2600 
at that $160 US retail price. It's absolutely bonkers how good value this thing is right now. So yeah, if you're after a good value processor, that's the one I'd be getting. Well, this is a bit awkward. Six months ago now, I picked the AMD Ryzen 7 2700 or 2700X as the best value productivity CPUs. And today I'm picking, well, just the 2700. See, that's a bit different. <laughs> right now you can pick up the 2700 for, it's about $50 US less than the 2700X. And with that saving, you can get a decent cooler and that will allow you to get the most out of the CPU. That said, I should just quickly note that you don't need to really overclock the 2700X, so you could just get that and run at stock and not mess around with overclocking and upgrading coolers and whatnot. Or you could just save $50 and forfeit a tiny amount of performance and then get a better quality motherboard, which is what I suggested with the 2600. And then that's a pretty good plan for supporting those upcoming seven nanometer Zen 2 CPUs. So in short, for $270 US, the Ryzen 7 2700 uh, pretty much smashes anything and everything Intel has to offer in this price range, especially when it comes to productivity. Uh, the Core i7-8700 series still holds an advantage in lightly threaded workloads thanks to a clock speed advantage, but for seriously taxing uh, time-consuming productivity workloads, the extra cores of the 2700 uh, will hand it a real advantage. The second gen Ryzen CPUs also took a decent step forwards when it comes to gaming performance, and here the 2700 is very respectable, especially when paired with the right memory. As applications continue to make better use of Ryzen 7's many threads, applications such as Premiere Pro CC as an example, uh, we're gonna to continue to see Ryzen walking away with it. Of course, Intel now also offers eight core 16 thread uh, desktop CPUs. Well, they offer the 9900K. You can't buy it, it's really expensive, but they do offer it. But the point is the Ryzen 7 2700 is just world's better value. It's almost half the price. So because of that, and then AMD's commitment to the AM4 platform, I feel like right now, the Ryzen 7 2700, or the, the Ryzen 7 series really, offer shoppers the most bang for their buck. Okay, so the best performance gaming CPU. An obvious win here for Intel, uh, but the question is which Intel CPU do you pick? Uh, technically speaking, the Core i9-9900K offers the highest level of performance for gamers, so I guess it wins this category. Uh, that said, it also, well, you can't buy it, so in order to qualify for this category, you first have to be able to buy it, and then secondly, it actually has to make sense. And right now, you certainly can't buy the 900K, at least not easily, and it's debatable as to how much sense it makes at the $500 US MSRP. Pricing really is the main issue here, and uh, Intel fans don't really seem to understand my position on this one. For gamers, the 9900K doesn't really offer uh, anything new or anything extra in terms of performance. At best, it's a few percent faster than the 8700K, and that is into obviously today's games, because I can't test future games, but those two extra cores, it's kind of a Ryzen 7 situation. It's going to be a while before they become useful, and then by the time they do, there'll be much better processors to buy. So it doesn't really justify the 35% increase in price if you can buy the 9900K at the $500 US MSRP. The 9900K also requires a really high quality motherboard. And if you want to achieve maximum performance, you'll also need to get uh, a really good cooler as well because it does run quite hot when trying to hit the multiplier table rather than being limited to the 95 watt TDP. And I should just note at the 95 watt TDP, while it does run very cool and extremely efficient, more so than the Ryzen 7 processors, uh, it's not really an upgrade over the 8700K for gaming. Of course, if money's not an issue and you just want a blazing fast rig, the most blazing of blazing fast rigs possible, then I guess the 9900K uh, is the option to get. However, if you're after a high-end gaming rig, uh, but it also has to make sense, then, well, you've got to get the 8700K. Uh, it's really a much more practical CPU, and it's what I'd get if I was building a new gaming system. So I'm going to continue recommending the Intel Core i7 8700K for now as the best gaming CPU. Okay, finally a category with an updated pick. 
though it's not exactly radically different. So in June 2017, I went with the Core i9 7900X, though I did make it clear at the time that I didn't actually recommend buying that processor until AMD's Threadripper series arrived and we had a chance to evaluate it. But I did conclude by saying, if you must buy now and you're aware that there is a competitor incoming, then sure, get the 7900X, it's still a beast of a CPU. Long story short, the Threadripper 1950X arrived a few months later and it became without a doubt my number one pick for the best extreme desktop CPU category. It's true that the 16 core 32 thread Core i9 7960X is at times faster, but it also costs 100% more. So you're paying 100% more for roughly the same performance. So yeah, I don't wanna pick that one on a technicality that it is technically better because yeah, I, I wouldn't buy that CPU. Then we have Intel's refresh, the Skylake X refresh and the Core i9 9820X um, really isn't much better. And at $890 US, it can't hold a candle to the $900 Threadripper 2950X, which is the, well, the Threadripper refresh, I suppose, though it's a bit more impressive than the refresh that Intel was offering. So anyway, the 2950X is now my new pick for this category. That said, I should just note that the 1950X is currently selling for $600 US, and that is without question the best value extreme desktop CPU right now. So if you can get one of those for $600 US, or whatever equivalent that is in your currency, then I would certainly recommend getting that as the 2950X really isn't that much faster. Well, there you have it, my CPU picks as of November 2018. The Ryzen 3 2200G is still the best choice for budget shoppers. The Ryzen 5 2600 is very obviously the best choice right now in terms of price, performance, and everything else. $160 US for a six core 12 thread CPU uh, is absolutely amazing. So yeah, best value desktop CPU hands down. Then we have the Ryzen 7 2700 and the 2700X, and they really make the most sense for those wanting to get uh, some real work done. Then for the ultimate no compromise gaming experience, there's really nothing better than the Core i7-8700K. You could argue that under most conditions, it's not that much different than the Ryzen 7 2700X, but if you want to ensure maximum performance in all gaming titles, no matter what, the 8700K is the CPU to go for. Then for those after an extreme desktop CPU, we have the Threadripper 2950X replacing the outgoing 1950X. Though as I mentioned just a moment ago, if you can snag a 1950X for $600 US or whatever the equivalent uh, value is in your currency, then that is absolutely the CPU to be getting. That's an insane bargain. Anyway, I hope these picks have helped uh, any of you who are looking to buy a new CPU and let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my picks and you can do so down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I read all of them. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.